Hey there and welcome to my latest landscape photography and wilderness venture here in Tasmania. Today I'm rugged up in my 5.3mm wetsuit driving along this cold rainy sort of a road. I'm down the west coast again today and to begin this adventure I'm going to get very cold. I'm going to be riding a jet ski across a beautiful pristine lake and I'm going to go and chase some waterfalls. One of the waterfalls I've been to before and today I'm going to try and take an adventurous shortcut into the back of this waterfall and I'm also going to go and do a bit of free exploring and try and find another waterfall hidden up in a ravine that I'm not sure anyone's really ever been to before so quite exciting a little bit nervous at the same time unsure what to expect hopefully all my gear will stay dry at the other side of the lake a bit of a swim pack up and then a haul up the side of the mountain so Stay tuned for an exciting wilderness and photography vlog here again today in beautiful Tasmania. just arrived at the boat ramp here down the west coast and as you can see loading up the sea do the biggest challenge is loading up is to make sure anything that falls off the back of a sea do if it does fall off the back it will float so I've got these beautiful big dry bags packed full of air as you can see everything's harnessed onto the back here and with a bit of luck when we get to the other side of the lake which is about 15 kilometers away everything will remain dry so it's time to hit the go button and put on some action. So I have just parked the jet ski just a bit further back down here and as you can see the water level is quite low. It feels like a, a lunar landscape through here. I am just checking to see if there's any more rivers or creeks running through over the back here. I don't want to get all the gear on and realise that I can't actually get through there. So just doing a bit of a recon here. Um, it's very, very, very muddy underfoot. And I've also got to be very careful not to get lost here. Um, a few spots are quite muddy underfoot, like I was just saying, quite soft. And when we put the packs on, it's probably gonna put another 15 kilos on me. So I'm not feeling terribly confident at the moment, but having come this far, I think it would be disappointing not to 
get the gear on and at least have a try to get to these waterfalls. I would have liked to get a bit further up around that creek, but it just got too shallow. I didn't fancy dragging a jet ski up a creek and potentially falling in six foot holes along the way. And I don't really want to crawl over the top of that either. So hopefully if I skirt the side of this lake, I might potentially get up there without having to get too serious through the the edge of the forest there, so stay tuned. So I have been successful in getting changed out of my wetsuit, which is good. It actually feels a bit better to be walking in boots and not booties. As you can see just up in the background there, in the big high fizz bags there, I've just hung the wetsuits in there, or we've put our wetsuits in there. So the game plan now is to head up into this valley through this sort of semi-grassed area on the edge of the lake here. Hopefully there's not any really deep spots to encounter as we make our way across. And hopefully it won't take too long to start ascending up to our first waterfall. So let's go check it out. I've just spent the last half hour or so crawling up this enormous hill and it has been a real slog. The bush here in Tassie in these uncharted parts of the world is super thick. What's actually just caught my attention is this bowl here. I've just been walking around to the top of this knoll here and I've looked down and there's this incredible sinkhole. And I'm actually standing in this huge sinkhole as we're talking and I'm just a little bit intrigued to see what's down the bottom of this. There might be a 10,000 year old tree or there just might be a whole bunch of bog or nothing. But the reality is at this stage that first waterfall I was going to navigate to is looking probably too hard today so I might just focus on the secondary one. It just feels like it's getting too hard in the amount of time we've got. So. I've still got to get over the top of this ridge here, back down to the river before the, the idea of that track where I was going to go even starts. So I think I might just have a bit of explore here, back over the ridge and then keep pressing on. I have just put myself into this beautiful little cavern here, looking back out. Looking up into the cavern, there's some beautiful looking salad types, but what I'm really captivated here is by the green foreground creeping its way up the side of this cabin. I've just put the 35mm lens on my tripod here to sit in the middle of the stream. It's quite cool. I'm very cautious of these big gruesome looking cave spiders in here, so just being mindful not to touch my head. I have just taken a couple of exposures. I suggest that I'm going to take two exposures, one for the, the light in the background. I'd say that to expose that correctly, I'm going to get too much shadow in this cave and I'll take an exposure for inside this cave. So I've just taken a few shots, you can hear rattling off, and I'm already stoked with these results. So I have just made my way back from the west coast and I did miss out on those beautiful waterfall photos because the distance was really or grossly underestimated how far it was to get in there. Yeah, I'm just travelling through this beautiful myrtle forest and for the first time today it actually feels really nice to be dry and not so cold. Uh, just coming back across that lake through all those dead trees I took a few other pictures they were all handheld. I didn't blog it, it was just a bit too difficult given the prevailing weather. So just a nice composition shooting across the dead trees and some nice light in the background from the passing storm. And I'll just give you a quick look at those pictures now. So 
I have made my way home, or almost on my way home, I've stopped at this waterfall, this beautiful little waterfall, on the way back from chasing waterfalls down the west coast, which I didn't get to see. I have lost some sound in some of my videos along the way, so I've just shown you some clips, but I'll just fill you in. Um, it was too hard to get to the place that we wanted to get to. It was just grossly, we just grossly underestimated how hard it would be to get to those spots in Tasmania without a track. So we just did what we could. We got to where we could and we decided to make the call and turn around. Sometimes as a photographer, it gets a little bit disappointing. You've got this idea on this amazing place you want to go and visit and it's just not physically possible. But you do make the most of all the opportunities you've got and that's why I've stopped at this beautiful waterfall and I'm really stoked with it. I have set this tripod up really low down to the ground. It is my pack tripod and unfortunately it doesn't like full extension. It gets a little bit wobbly, especially on a time exposure. So it's really, really low here in the creek. As you can see, it's not very stable. I have just taken two shots of this waterfall and I've particularly focused on these rocks in the foreground with the green moss on them. I think they're quite beautiful at this time of day and this time of year. I have got the waterfall in the background and I have taken two exposures, one for the foreground to get some nice sharpness there. I've focus stacked the background as well. And as far as camera setting goes, I have used F11 at one second with a circular polarizer on it just to take that glare across the water. So I have just finished shooting that beautiful little waterfall down there and I'm on my way back to the vehicle. It has been a big day and I'm feeling quite weary at this stage, but I couldn't not get the camera out and photograph these beautiful big towering myrtles here in this Tasmanian forest. These are probably one of my favourite trees, just the beautiful moss that grows up the side of these ancient beauties makes great photographic subjects. I have waited till the sun's dipped over the horizon so I don't have any light interfering with this shot. It's actually quite dark which seems a little bit strange taking photos at this time of the day but with a reduced or an increased ISO sensitivity on my camera at ISO 200 shooting these darker myrtles actually looks quite sensational. I haven't used a polarizer of any description. I've just shot straight onto the 35mm Zeiss lens and I'm really stoked with the configuration and the beautiful green colour in these trees and I'm really stoked with the highlighting from the valley caused by the river in the background. So for now, that's it for a day and stay tuned and check out my next landscape, photography and wilderness venture here in Tasmania.